I'm absolutely shocked at that. That's insane. That makes me very, very happy. <laughs> this is nice. You didn't run anyone over. We didn't kill anyone. You didn't get another boat. That's good. Good morning, we are in beautiful Koh Panyang and we stayed an extra day because it is so pretty here. One of our top three, five anchorages ever. This morning we are off to Koh Tao. We're going to go and explore Koh Tao a little bit. We did it with Nikki and Jason, but we didn't really get too much time to do that. But now raise the anchor, get the engine started and off. Make sure we've got cooling water. Do I need to go to port, babe? That's it now. Sorry. Can you can you see it? Say when. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we'd love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Yeah, I'm just uh, getting the boat on the course that it needs to be. I don't think we got the right wind angle actually. It's really weird. Our speed of the water is very, very low, but I think the log wheel has got algae or something on it. But yeah, we're doing five knots. <laughs> yeah, because I wouldn't have thought there'd be a knot and a half difference between our speed of the water and speed overground. It's, it's, just some shit in the, it's just some shit in the paddle wheel. Hotel's under that cloud right there. Hopefully, by the time we get there, the cloud will have moved on. Yeah, so our speed over ground is 6.8-ish, 7. And then our boat speed is only saying 5, but that's clearly not correct because there would, there's no way there'd be a 2 or 3 knot difference between those two. There's hardly any current here. Oh, this is what it's all about. We're making about 8.5 knots last time I saw sails look beautiful and the boat is just so comfortable oh happy days this is nice wind's dropped a bit boat speed's dropped a bit getting a few little gusts so it's kind of vacillating between 13 knots and then gusting up to 21-ish. We don't have a reef in the main. Hopefully we can just leave it as is. That being said, there's quite a few white caps out there. So we'll wait until we get out between the islands and then we'll make an assessment. So I'm on watch at the moment and I'm testing out the nav station. And I think that if I'm doing night watches, this is probably where I'm going to have to be. Don't love that idea, but it's probably where I'll position myself. However, it's not ideal. My visibility isn't great. I can see, but I have to be sat up. I can't really relax in the chair. So after a three hour night watch, that might get quite tiring. And every few minutes, maybe when we're like out 
in the middle of the ocean every five minutes, I could get up, have a little walk around the saloon, check everything, and then sit back down again. But I think if we're sailing at night time, say along the Thailand coast or along the Indonesian coast or somewhere where there's lots of fishing boats and lots of buoys and nets, then probably I would want to be keeping a lookout all the time. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes in practice. We are gonna do an overnight passage to get back to Pattaya, so stay tuned. What do you reckon, do you wanna put a reef in or? It's a gust. I it's can enough. always dump the main if it doesn't drop down in a minute. Yeah. It was, it was more like 16, 17, yeah. It just that it goes above 20, then we'll put the reef in, but I don't think it's necessary at the moment. All right. I think this is our first cloudy day. It's all cloudy over there. Hotel, Koh Penyan. Only about 25 miles, fairly quick one. We'll be there just in time for lunch. Well, one, of the, one of the screws has backed out of the foil. Right. It's not there anymore, so I need to get one set. Is that what they can break for, or is that something different? Well, I only saw the other side, we're on a different tack. So I when it was lost and it's gone. So nice to be able to put things down and not worry about them moving. <laughs> That's something that I'm definitely going to have to get used to sailing on a catamaran because I'm still always worried that something is just going to go flying across the galley, across the saloon, whatever. Yeah, the fact that we can just put things down and leave them there is uh, very exciting to me still, a real novelty. I don't like sailing out wind. I don't see the point of dagger boards. I literally just don't see the point of them now. Well, you know, they do lots of different things. They provide stability, they, you know, they counter pivot the, the action of the main. But realistically speaking, I don't like sailing out wind. It's shit. It isn't so bad. It's not so bad, no, but we got 40 degrees apparent, right? The boat is not going along and we're only doing seven, eight knots. But like abaft of the beam, like downwind, like... How yeah. quickly you get used to sailing the catamaran? No, I'm just saying to you, no, no, I'm just saying to you, I'm going to put this out there for everyone on the internet. Given a choice between a cat with dagger boards or a cat without dagger boards, I will take a cat without dagger boards with, with mini kills. I understand that you can trip over waves and, you know, if someday I'm on the news of this being repeated because I've died somewhere in the Indian Ocean because the cat's turned over, then well, I won't be able to take it back because I'll be dead. But the point I'm trying to make to you is that upwind sailing is not pleasant. It's not as pleasant as downwind sailing. And I don't need the extra five degrees that are pointing. I don't want to race a boat. Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't mind like, you know, mini transats where you're like six and a half meters of bullshit, like crossing the Atlantic Ocean, like pissing into a bucket. I don't mind that, yeah, but this is a cruising boat. Well, we haven't had a downwind sail yet. Well, no, of course we bloody haven't, because it's sailing, isn't it? You never get a downwind sail. When do you ever get a downwind sail? You never get a downwind sail. We can't complain, babe. No, I'm not complaining. This is sweet. I'm, no, of course I can't complain. If this was Ruby Rose, love, we'd be Well, we'd be on a like, 45 tree We would, but there'd be shit everywhere. There'd be basil plants and soil like in the bilges. There'd be oats all over the place. This is sweet. The entire uh, would be covered in salt. Exactly. There'd be like all sorts of malarkey. We'd be wet, having a row, like blah, blah, blah. Something would have fallen off. And we'd only be doing like four knots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God damn it, 4.2. Let's push for 4.2 knots. I'm pretty happy with this day. I'm, I'm pretty comfy. Well, listen, you've got to washing up on the bloody mat. On the mat there. Yeah, exactly. Quite sexy today. 
Very sexy. This point cannot point at 30 degrees. I don't understand it. I'm absolutely shocked at that. That's crazy. As soon as you get under 35, it really picks up. But yeah, it's not that's right. At 30. No. It's just shit. It's not even shit. It's doing five knots in 18 knots apparent. That's insane. That makes me very, very happy. <laughs> We are closing in on Koh Tao and we lost the wind a little while ago. Uh, well, we didn't lose it. The wind, the wind swung round a little while ago and we've discovered that, I mean, above 30 degrees, the boat can point surprisingly and she does particularly well above kind of 34, 35 degrees. Uh, we maintain speed. Whoa. Get rolling. We maintain <laughs> decent speed. Um, up until that point and then uh, below 34 ish we start to drop off speed wise and then below 30 obviously she completely depowers and that's the end of that we had to drop the main and fill the jib and turn the engines on uh, but that's okay we were just about to tower anyway so it's all good we are just uh, closing in on the mooring field our strategy today because this is the first time Nick and I have picked up a mooring buoy together, just the two of us on this boat. We did pick up loads in Australia when we were uh, chartering the two 1260s. So we have done this once or twice before on a catamaran, but this is the first time on Ruby Rose too. So our strategy is that I'll be at the helm, Nick will be at the bow um, on the trampolines, picking up the buoy and we'll, because we can barely communicate because we can't hear each other, we're relying purely on hand signals. Let's hope this goes well though. Right, pick a boy together. No, no, no. Which boy? Which boy? Well, the one behind the blue boat. There's one right in the nose of the red. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that looks like the best one for us. Yeah, so I'll go around and then onto it. Yeah, onto it. Can you go forward just so you can keep an eye out the swimmers and whatnot? Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry? Baby, you need to face me. You need to face me. Yeah, I can see that. Quite nervous. Space privacy. I can't see it, babe. Okay. All right. Forward. Forward. Okay. Are we attached? It's literally like 10 centimeters from getting. I haven't seen the strong, babe. But I think the next time what I can do is I can stand up here and I can see a lot better from up to We didn't run anyone over. We didn't kill anyone. We didn't hit another boat. That's good. We did it. We did it in the second attempt. We've done we've done uh We've done far worse before. <laughs> we've done far worse than boat was before. I found that quite nerve wracking because, because I was very close to this boring boy over here, so I couldn't really come at it. Like I couldn't take a nice wide circle. The, are you using reverse? I am, but it's very. I'm not good. Are we definitely attached? Let me just go and double check. Sure I'm, I'm, it's, it's very sensitive. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's, just, it's just getting used to it. It's just getting used to it. What do I believe? What makes me feel it? To write you this song. A very lovely anchorage. I'm getting a beautiful breeze through that window which is very welcome because it's quite a hot day. We have just been sitting here working as you can see I'm just doing some social media behind me um, scheduling our video for tonight and scheduling all the social media to do with that and we've just been sitting here watching all the dive boats come in all afternoon. Who's wrong and who's right
flash. <laughs> I always forget that that's my job. <laughs> Sorry. Slightly dodgy. <laughs> so we moved bays because the other place had no where that was open. And uh, this is what we do for a cold beer. We just come around the corner and uh, leave our dinghy in a fairly precarious situation. Okay, do you want to go back to the boat? Yeah. Okay, let's get back to the boat. Please don't yeah, off. you're right. It looks. Yeah. When you're We're not going to enjoy our beer. Okay, beer on the boat tonight. That was the point that we went around. Not the best idea. We learned a lesson today. We are on the Balance 442. This boat is insane. We are looking at the Vision 444. Well, it looks like a heat shrunk version of our boat. This galley, it is huge. So let's talk about ventilation. You know that that's what I love to talk about. The build quality here is evident. She is absolutely immaculate. Good visibility to your sails as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, again, I don't have much to say. <laughs> Which is odd.